the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan. Dr. Ford, Chaplain of the United States Congress, will give the invocation. Dr. Ford. Let us stand. Let us pray. Pray. Amen. Mr. President, uh, Mrs. Reagan, Chief Justice, Secretary Baker, my distinguished uh, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. As chairman of the Senate the Committee on Rules and Administration, which held hearing on, hearings on Dr. Billington's nomination, I'm very pleased to represent the United States Senate here this morning. My colleague on the committee and chairman of the Joint Committee on the library, Claiborne Pell, regrets that a meeting scheduled uh, some time ago in Rhode Island keeps him from being with us this morning. On the dais, uh, with, also with us from Congress today is the distinguished majority leader of the U.S. House of Representatives, Thomas Foley, and the ranking minority member of the Senate Rules Committee, my good friend, Ted Stevens. We come here to our support for this institution, which represents this nation's commitment to a knowledgeable citizenry. And we also want to thank Librarian of Congress Emeritus Daniel Borstein for his outstanding stewardship for the last 12 years. The presence of the President here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President, Mr. Chief Justice, members of the Cabinet and the Congress, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's hard to imagine a more fitting place uh, for the installation of the 13th Librarian of the Congress than under the torch of learning in this great hall for itself to the American people. The library has become, in Dr. Borston's words, the world's greatest multimedia encyclopedia. The library has been truly opened up to the American people, with the Center for the Book and Council of Scholars only two examples. The position of librarian has in turn, President, although the House of Representatives has no constitutional role in the selection of the librarian, I would like to state on behalf of the House that we are deeply grateful to you for so splendid a selection of James Billington, and we congratulate our colleagues in the Senate on their wise influence has grown, and it now sponsors more than 250 meetings annually and some 20 international conferences. The baton that is being passed today uh, from Dr. Borston to Dr. Billington is uh, the pinnacle of American intellectual life. It's an impressive transition from one gifted internationally minded scholar to another. During the more than 200 years uh, since the founding, the library has taken on substantial new responsibility. It gives me a great pleasure to do that to James Billington, to Marjorie, to the family. Uh, our wishes for every success in the future. And to Dr. Borston and Mrs. Borston, the gratitude of the Congress for his past service and for every good wish. We are uh, a nation of common values, and this is the center of those values of our history in our future, and we can have great confidence in the selection of the president of James Billington as the 13th librarian of the Congress as the custodian of that future.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Justice of the United States will now administer the oath of office. Raise your right hand, Mr. Billington, and repeat after me. I, James H. Billington. I, James H. Billington. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much. We can all be grateful for such beautiful edifices as this. These buildings are treasures, and each of them in its own way is a monument to freedom. Certainly that's true of this building, the crown jewel of the largest repository of information in the world. It was my honor a few years ago to have helped dedicate the Madison Building. This structure, of course, is named for Thomas Jefferson, author of our Declaration of Independence, champion of human freedom, and third president of the United States. Jefferson had an abiding faith in the people. But he knew that the success of that experiment begun on July 4, 1976, depended on an informed citizenry. If a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. Jefferson wrote that. It's fitting, then, that this Library of Congress, this great clearinghouse for ideas, knowledge, and culture, is open to every citizen. Nearly two and a half million people visited this library last year. It's one of the great institutions of our nation, reflecting the values and openness of a free society. Today, it's a pleasure to assign the stewardship of this institution to one of this nation's most respected intellectuals. Dr. James Billington, I am certain, will continue the magnificent job done here at the Library of Congress by his predecessor, Dr. Daniel Borstein. And let me add that I think this nation owes a debt of gratitude to Dr. Borstein for his hard work and dedication. <laughs> Dr. Borstein did much to ensure that the people as well as government officials receive full benefit of this national treasure. Dr. Billington will build on this tradition. Jim has had a lifelong love of books. He stands here today because of an appreciation for scholarship instilled in, by, in him by a father who never went to college, but who filled his home with books bought secondhand to save the family's limited funds. Much to his father's credit, Jim Billington received a scholarship to attend Princeton University, from which he holds a BA degree. He went on to receive his Doctorate of Philosophy as a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford University. By the way, he speaks eight languages. Throughout a distinguished career, Dr. Billington has combined his love of scholarship 
with a dedication to public service because he believes that scholarship and freedom go hand in hand. In this library and throughout our country, one will find books and publications on almost every subject and from almost every point of view. Our founding fathers wanted it that way. They trusted the ability of the people to make judgments for themselves. When truth and error have fair play, Ben Franklin once wrote, the former is always an overmatch for the latter. Competition, then, is an integral party of a, or part of a free society. It is not vital just for commerce and industry, but also an energizing force in the arena of ideas. There's a creative genius that is unleashed when people are free. Restrict information and you restrict the potential of the nation. Limit public debate and you limit the dynamism of liberty. Dr. Billington will now bear the responsibility of overseeing the world's largest library, which includes a collection of 84 million items, 535 miles of shelves, and a staff of more than 5,000. During a time of necessary budget restraint, this will not be an easy task. The challenge, as Dr. Borstein will testify, is not just administering this institution, but ensuring that its vast resources are put to maximum use for the benefit of government, academia, business, and the people themselves. The Library of Congress was founded with a $5,000 appropriation in 1800. It has grown with the country, and it is an important part of the decision-making process here in the nation's capital. Dr. Billington, I know you will keep this institution the vital center of scholarship and ideas that it was intended to be. We entrust you with this great national resource, Dr. Billington, and are proud to have you as America's librarian. Thank you, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, our 13th Librarian of Congress, James Hadley Billington. Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, Mr. Chief Justice, distinguished cabinet members, congressmen, and friends and guests. I am very grateful, deeply grateful to you, Mr. President, not just for the responsibility you've entrusted in me today, but for the honor and the grace which you and Mrs. Reagan accord to the entire dedicated staff of the Library of Congress by coming here today and affirming so eloquently as you just have the importance of its mission as a vital center of scholarship and ideas. I especially like that word vital, Mr. President, full of life, for libraries are today's living link between the record of yesterday and the possibilities of tomorrow. This library is not just all these marvelous books and buildings, but it's the anguish, the achievements, and the aspirations of 74 in a building with a major library. And it was institutionalized by the founding of this library in this new capital in 1800. For most of the diverse citizens everywhere who helped make democracy work here and develop on a continental scale, in the beginning, truly, was the Word, the Bible that guided most of them, the compact signed by the first of them, the Constitution written by the wisest of them, and of course all the songs and stories all that re-legitimate tyranny. Our type of democracy has depended on knowledge and grown through books. 
By their very nature, books foster freedom with dignity. Books don't coerce, they convince. They speak to the active individual, confronting in private the voice of reason. They do not shriek to some passive crowd the resources we have here as we move ahead to the year 2000 when this library will celebrate its bicentennial just as humanity reaches its bimillennium. Now, of course, the Con Library of Congress contains the world's greatest collection of maps, as of so much else, but it has, alas, no map for the future. And as a practical people, then... Thank you very much. For the uh, benediction, let me thank each of us that you remain in place until the President and Mrs. Reagan have uh, left the dais. It is my pleasure now to call upon the Reverend Sanford Gardner, Rector of Christ Church, Georgetown, to deliver the benediction. Blessed Father, and have our being. We are very mindful of your abiding presence with us on this splendid and historic occasion. We are grateful for the words of praise and wisdom and challenge that we have heard. We are grateful for the insight of those who wisely chose thy servant James for this honored position and distinguished service to our country and to all the world. Give to him every grace and strength of your spirit that he will need to fulfill his responsibilities as the Librarian of Congress. Give him vision and courage. Now and in the days ahead. Thank you very much. <laughs>